Now, the first question you need to know when they're talking about psych medications, what does it do to your patient? Now, whenever you go to NCLEX and they give you a medication and you see the medication is about psych disease or depression problem or anxiety problem, what should you know for your NCLEX exam? Now, the first question before I start it, what does a side job do to your patient? The question says, does it cure? Do they use it to cure the disease? Or do they use them to reduce the sign and symptom of the disease? What would you say? Would you say it's, 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 it's going to cure the disease? They use it to reduce the sign and symptoms. There you go. Because the psych medication never cure, never treat your patient. Remember that. Because there's a lot of students, when they give you that question, they give you, okay, the patient is taking uh, loazepam. So, loazepam, is, uh, the doctor is ordered to cure the disease. No. Pay attention. The very, very first thing you got to know, those medications, they don't use them to cure the disease. Now, let's talk about that. So, whenever they give you side drug, there's two signs, two symptoms, two side effects you need to pay attention to. The very, very first one, the patient always going to have low blood pressure. Wait, let me say it again. Let me say it again. Whenever the patient is taking a psych medication, those medications always cause low blood pressure, which is hypotension, and then weight change. Are you there with me? Weight change. Now, weight change means most of the time they will gain weight. Those patients, they gain weight. Are you there? Now, what happened is when you take in psych medications, you need to assess, you need to monitor as a nurse for low blood pressure and the weight change. Most of the time, we gain. There's one or two medications that may cause weight loss. And I'm going to mention that to you later. Now, whenever they give you this medication, like I said, this medication does not cure the condition of your patient. Okay. They use them to relieve. What? What do? Why do they use them for? They use them to relieve signs and symptom. Remember, I said that in chapter. For example, in chapter four, with my student, I mentioned hallucination problem illusion problem and delusion problem those are the key sign and symptom as the student the key symptom of crazy people of psych disease they are hallucination illusion and delusion remember that I, so I, spoke, I spoke about the difference between hallucinations, illusion, and delusion. Remember that. Remember delusion means the patient always scared. The patient have the scary problem. The patient ha is having, like, the patient think everybody is out there to kill them. The patient think, like, the police is out there to arrest them. That's why they think when they're talking about delusion. Remember I said that? Now, hallucinations and illusion... They are two different things. They look the same. They look like, okay, everything has to do with the sensor, sensory experience. The patient develops a false experience uh, when it comes to sensory. But now, what they see, what they hear, in reality, there's nothing there, right? But if it, that's hallucination. But if they say illusion, remember I said that when they say illusion, guys, illusion means... In reality, there is something there, right? There is something in reality there. But what happened? You miss, you misinterpret what you see. 
what you hear, for example. But this medication, guys, not only it will leave your symptom, but it also improve the quality of life. That's why the psych medication does to your patients. Are you there with me? Now, yes. I'm gonna mention with all my students, I always mention about 12 medication. 12. Now with 12 medication, once you come to this review, you study the 12 medication, you are ready for NPLEX. You ready? Whenever they give you a psych medication, you are ready. Now the very first, I'm gonna mention like 12 medication. But let me tell you that the very first medication you need to know for your NCLEX exam is first generation antipsychotic medication. Did you hear what I said? What is the name? First, first generation, generation, generation antipsychotic anti medication. This medication, I want you to be aware of it. Not only they call it first generation antipsychotic, they call them also neuroleptic medication, conventional medication, or typical antipsychotic medication. Remember those names. Remember those names. Now, what happened is the very first psych medication, what happened that this medication may cause extra pyramidal side effects and tardive dyskinesia chop problem. Now, whenever you see extra pyramidal or tardive dyskinesia, guess what? The patient is having brain problem. This is having brain effect. Now, the, the, there is a neurological sign and symptom there. Now, what happened them? What happened to them? Whenever they have extra pyramidal side effect, the patient start having neurological syndrome, neurological sign and symptom, like involuntary. They cannot control their body. They cannot. They like trying. They try, they do. They like doing movement like that, right? By repetition, they try to like, bah, 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 da da da. So whenever the patient is coming, like, take, I mean, they taking. Uh, the tongue out, uh, uh, the, so the patient is having certain movement by repetition. A lot of you work with crazy people, right? You're working out with crazy people at nursing home. What happens is when you're having extra pyramidal, which is EPS side effect, that's okay. That's the side effect of the medication. The patient starts having facial grimacing, finger movement, tap the tapping the finger, the hands, they're talking like by themselves. You think they're talking to you, right? But well, guess what? This is extra pyramidal or tardive dyskinesia. When I say the word tardive, I, I see late. That's a late sign. Tardive, right? Do you see the word tardive? Tardive dyskinesia. Now, this patient, Whenever you see they taking this medication, pay attention. Pay attention to EPS. Remember EPS. That's one of the sad effects you need to pay attention to in your exam. Remember it. I'm going to be talking about 11 or 12 medications you should know. Now, the very, very first medication tonight you need to know for your NCLEX exam. No. They call it first, what is the name again? They call it first generation, first, first generation antipsychotic. First generation antipsychotic. That's the name. You need to know it first. Put count them. Whenever I'm talking and I've mentioned, because those medications, they are like antipsychotic and they are antidepressant. Remember that. Whenever they are antipsychotic, what I'm talking on the line with the word pain. If they like Antidepressant on the line with a wet, with a black or blue pen. So that way you can know which one is antipsychotic, which one is antidepressant drugs. Remember that. Okay. Now, the very first crazy people medication, the very first crazy people medication, they call that first 
generation anti-psychotic. How do you know that? The ending. Make sure you pay attention to the ending. Whenever you study your jog for your exam, remember the jog, you need to know the ending. The ending of the first crazy medication, the, the ending is Zin. Z-I-N-E. Zin. Do you, are you there with me? Zin, okay. that's the ending. Let me give you some example of this medication. Clopromazin. Promazin. Phenotazin. And Flufenazin. This is the medication that ends in end. What, what is the ending? Zin. It's like when they take those medications, look at what happened to those people, those crazy people. The medication do like, does like that. Look at what, do, what does it do. It does like that. Zin. And then when it's working, it does like that. Zin. Whenever you remember the word Zin, you remember this medication is a psych medication. Psych medication. This is how I remember it for Inplex. Psych medication because it's ending in Zin. What it does to the brain, it goes to the brain, right? Zin. So automatically, I know it's gonna cause EPS. EPS. Extra pyramidal syndrome. Are you there with me? Are you getting there? So, this is how you remember the very first medication for NPEX. But guess what? Those medications, mm -hmm. there are three important things to do to know for NPEX. Wait, let me say it again. Let me say it again. There are three for all the zine. There are three important things you need to know for NCLEX. Dr. Lune, what other three things should I know when they give me this question in NCLEX? Right? The first one. Number one. Number one, pay attention if the doctor is using it in large dose. What? Large dose? That means big dose, right? The whole dose. I got it. Pay attention, number two. Pay attention, number two, if the doctor is using the medication in small dose. Oh, I got it. Are you there with me? That's the number two. Number three, the doctor consider he considers the medication as a major tranquilizer. Oh, that's a very difficult word. Major tranquilizers, right? Those are those medications, they're like they're like, they're like big boy, you know, big. They don't play. They don't play. When they use those medications, no, they consider her, they consider those medications as major. What did what did I say? What did I say? They consider them as major tranquilizers. Tranquilizers. Now, when, with the word tranquilizer, I understand what it is. I understand relax. I understand calm you down. Relaxing your patient. Tranquilizer mean your patient go slow. Your patient go calm. Your patient relax. Are you there with me? Are you there with me? So therefore, whenever they say major, tranquilizer is the first generation anti-psychotic medication. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, what happened what happen is when they use those medications, they calm down your crazy patient. They relax your crazy patient in NCLEX. Let's go back to the first one. I said the doctor could use it in large dose, right? Large, large, big. The whole dose, 20 milligram, 30 milligram, good job. Now, whenever they say the doctor is using the whole dose or large dose, what should I know for NCLEX? Now, whenever they use it in large dose, the doctor, the goals, the goal of this medication is to reduce or to decrease what? What is going to reduce sign, sign, and symptom of the, of the disease? This is how you remember it. Remember, they do not care the disease. Your mental illness is not going to be cured. It's only reduce your sign and symptom. symptom. Now, number two says the doctor may use it in and what? The doctor may use this medication in small and small dose. Now, when they use it in small dose, be careful, NCLEX tip, NCLEX tip. Whenever they say small dose, 5 milligram, 7 milligram, that's very small. 
Now, whenever they say small dose, guess what the answer is? The answer is gonna be a patient that a patient who's having nausea, vomiting, right? They use it also as a sedative. Do you know what is that? Sedative medication. In some painful situations, I am, I am, and if you cannot sleep, the doctor may use a small dose of, of what? Of zine, of the zine medication. Zine La clopromazine, promazine, remember it? Now, the key question is, whenever they say small dose of this medication, pay attention guys. Pay attention, lessons today. Whenever they say small dose, that does not mean that does not mean the patient is crazy. No. Now, if I'm looking on the H1, what is on the H1? On the H1 is the medication they use when you have nausea and vomit and vomiting. Okay. Now, if I don't see it in the order, and I go to NCLEX, and I see small. I see a small dose of a zine medication. I'm gonna pick up that answer. Are you there with me? Now, the answer would be small dose, small dose of clopromazine. Are you there with me? Now, they use it, they consider it when the doctor says small dose, that means anti emetic they consider as the anti emetic medications they also consider them as also sedative medication that's a very good question right <laughs> only when they say small dose pay attention to this one pay attention to this one and this type of question they call it critical thing critical thinking question thinking. critical thinking question critical thinking question there's no doubt when you go to NPLEX. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, what happened to students, that's why I give always strategy, tactic, how to remember the question, how to remember the symptom, how to remember the side effect. That's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking about, like, I always talk about with my students with like 11 or 12 medication. Guess what? All those side effects are very pretty, are pretty easy. How, oh, doctor, you need, how it's going to be easy. The side effect, I need to memorize them. And when I get to this, I just like, um, 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 um. Don't do that with doctor, you need. Because with me, let me tell you that. Do you see the word generation? Do you see that? Generation, right? Yes. What, le what is the first letter when you write down generation? G. Therefore, we're going to use A, B, C, D. If you use A, B, C, D, the alphabet, you will remember all those side effects in NPLEX. And then period. Let me tell you that. If they say A, B, C, D, if I ask you what letter would you start? What letter and which letter would you start? A. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I would say A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Those letters, the reason why I stop in G, because they're talking about first generation enter psychotic medications this is how i remember my side effect now a let me say what a stands for a stands for anti-cholinergic it does enter anti the 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 side effect of those medications uh, they cause nausea vomiting dry mouth dry mouth you gonna uh, you gonna need to you gonna need to what to do what to drink what water on the on, always water because you're gonna have a dry mouth problem. Are you there with me? Now, those medications like anticholinergic, they like acetylcholine and dopamine. Those are those medications you need to pay attention to in your exam. Mm -hmm. Let's go with let's go with B now. What does B stand for? What does B stand for? Blurry vision. That's easy, right? That do I, do, yeah. do, I, do I make it easy for you? A for anticholinergic. B. Blurry vision. C, well, C is very easy. Oh my God, C is very easy. Let's go with C. Cause constipation. Let's make it easy again. D, what is D? D, oh, that's easy, D. D mean joazy, joazy, joaziness. Or dizziness. Let's make it easy. E, E, that's a new word. That's a very new word for NPLEX. E stand for E, P, S. Remember, it's under that, under that, this one, under that, under that, this one. E stand for E, P, 
S. So, men EPS mean H3, pyramido syndrome. Okay. And this syndrome, I just explained it earlier. I said that this has to do with your brain. That has to do with characterized by involuntary contraction of your muscles. Like that. You change your posture, mm -hmm. your gait, your gait, gait ataxia, your involuntary movement, uncontrolled limbo movement, your face like that, your lips change. So, so this is a EPS for MPLEX. On the like that, we time. Remember EPS. Mm -hmm. Remember EPS. Now, F, let me see what, what F stands for. Look at that. It sounds like an F. Not like letter F, but it sounds like an F, right? What is the name? What is the name? Photo. So, what is that? What is photo sensitivity in um, so, yeah. sun, sun exposure. Yes. Can you can you go to the beach? Can you go to picnic when if you're taking this medication? Can you do that? No, NCLEX. I cannot do that, NCLEX. Because if I do that, I'm gonna mess up everything. That's gonna be a problem. Now let's go with the last letter G. G stands for what? G stands for. It doesn't sound like a G, but it sounds when I pronounce it in English. Let's sound. Can you pronounce it for me? Let's go. Abgunulocytosis. Yeah. Oh, let's just say you don't. The, the it does not sound at all. So guanulocytosis. Guanulocytosis. That G. Are you there? Are you there with me? Guanulosatosis. Like a guanul. So whenever they say A mean WBC become low. Your WBC become very low. low. Now, once your WBC become low, you become infected. You at least for infect infection. Nplex tip. Nplex tip. Nplex tip. This is how I study my side effect for Nplex. This is how. I study my side effects for it. Now, like I say, if any student you want more, always tell them about me. There's no doubt, guys. If you study with me, this is not gonna be a challenge. It's very easy. Just stay focused and study your content the way I said it. There's more to see. Mm -hmm. This is how you study your content now if i explain you just one medication there's more to know there's adverse effect right the adverse effect now once you know the adverse effect whenever they give you adverse effect that's not the same thing with side effect because with those with the adverse effect you need to call the, doc, the doctor you need to qu question what's going on and with those patients it's always safety 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 so now Give me one, one minute. Now, whenever they give you this question, guys, if you want more information, you need more video, guess what? Go to my YouTube channel, click. This is, I'm in the middle of a class right now. I have to stop the class to talk to you guys. If you love what I'm doing, share. Share my videos, click. Subscribe, click on the little bell. Whenever I get a new video for you guys, you can get it for your NPLEX. I'm going to be do, doing small video for you guys. If you're interested, you need a review. Call me at 561-319-4660. 561-319-4660. Dr. Luné, number one instruction. I'm not only a nurse, I'm also a doctor, so I can help to pass your NPLEX. That was just a little demonstration. I'm going to put video for you. Encourage me, share the live, I mean share the videos, subscribe, share. This is how you can help me grow with my page. Encourage me with my YouTube page, go to my Facebook page, Louis May NPLEX Review, number one instructor. Thank you guys. See you next time for another video.